All right, uh, welcome to the Eric J. The Great Podcast Show. We got a, a special guest on the show today, uh, one Quay Guap. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing today? We're doing all right. So for anybody that ain't heard one of his songs, we're going to uh, play one of his songs. And then after that, uh, we'll get into the interview. <clears throat> She want the yank, she want the guac, she want the eggs, she want the pot, she want the yank, she want the guac, she want the eggs, she want the pot. It's Amy, ain't no me can't get it all. Shawty suck like at least got a pillow. So much drink in my cup, I won't get a call. Buckle up, I'll be ready, we taking off. She look great in that lace, make her take it off. She just wanna look teach, I'ma break off. Got a week in the knee, she can barely walk. Got a up on the purchase, I had a rock. Pretty by this bitch, got a water wall. I can't treat me just one thing, I love them all. Let the pussy be dripping like waterfalls. She can't run from the so she try to cry. She wanna yeah, she wanna quack. She wanna ex, she wanna pop. She wanna yeah. She wanna, 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 she
Yeah, man, I know that had to be a uh, rough uh, moving place to place like that, not being stable for a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, it was – I ain't really – like, it just made me mad as a kid. I ain't really understand the effects that it would have until I until I got older and I realized, you know what I'm saying, like, I could have did this if I would have stayed here or, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, did you, Do you got any siblings? And the same, I got one. I got one sister, uh, Ebony. Shout out to my sister, man. That's my baby. Okay. So as far as uh, activities, man, like uh, what activities you was into as a kid? Did you play any sports or anything like as that? As a kid, I was um, as a kid, I was outside a lot. Um, my mom worked a second shift job, so when I came home, she was headed to work. You know what I'm saying? It was really. I grew up in a time where uh. Wasn't really no, I mean, it was daycare, but once we got up a certain age, it's don't open the door for nobody, you know what I'm saying? Unless I told you it was me, you know what I'm saying? Me and my sister at home or whatever, things of that nature. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know how that is. I went through that. Yeah. So as far yeah, as but, uh, sports, I um I played sports. I kind of I kind of got lost in the question. I played sports my fourth grade year, but I was dealing with some behavior problems and I didn't get back to football until uh ninth grade, ninth grade when I came to Anderson. Okay. So as far as uh your family, man, like um did you have anybody in your family that was in the music business or anybody close to you, close friends, things like that? Uh I never had nobody close growing up to make it. I got a um my cousin Andreas and this is crazy because today makes eight years that we all celebrate Halloween because I had to bury him on Halloween in 2013. And um, he was one of the first ones that introduced me to the music. Like I had already been writing stuff and things of that nature, but he had a computer and an Xbox mic and he was recording in his closet. So that was one of the first times I ever made a song. But I shared the love of music with my mom. You know what I'm saying? She brought me my first CDs, uh, an array of music, which is why with the song you just heard, that that album is called For Ladies Only. And I'm sure we're going to get into that later, but it's just like, my mom used to listen to R&B, rap, gospel, anything. And so I'm in the back of the car just soaking all this in and it just created a love for the music. But uh, my cousins in Gaston, uh, 1K Empire, that's the, the 1K in my name, King of Oneself. And one of a kind. They 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 started the movement. They was really the biggest ones, the biggest influence on me personally. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that I could reach, things like that. And that was about, I say, like 2014, 2015. And ever since then, I've just been trying to run with it. Okay. So uh who are some of your favorite music artists growing up? Who you who did you yeah. learn to? Growing up, my first favorite artist, and this is gonna sound crazy. My first favorite artist was Usher growing up. First favorite artist because it was like going back to the for ladies only. Um Usher always had the girls, man. You know what I'm saying? He was cool. Like I ain't really got no rhythm like that. So I couldn't dance. But it was just he was somebody who I wanted to emulate. You know what I'm saying? He made good music. He had the girls. And Usher was my first favorite artist. That's crazy to say it. But yeah. Okay. So uh what where did you get your rap name from? 1K Guap, um, the group, 1K Empire, where I was telling you about my cousins. Um, I ain't really get to rap with them. And I say it's partially my fault, partially because they were still new to the music industry, trying to learn things of that nature. And it was just like, when I seen 1K, because it was, it was a group, not like a gang. Like, it was a group. We all pull up on each other, you know what I'm saying, things like that. But it was probably, like, out of the whole group, it's like eight rappers. So, to me, it's like I'm looking at it like a Wu-Tang Clan or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody got a different style. Everybody, subject matter is different, you know what I'm saying? And it was just, like, not having a brother going up, losing my cousin Dredge, you know what I'm saying, that I wanted to do music with. I just really always wanted to be a part of something. And the 1K being one of a kind, a king of oneself, always trying to put a thousand percent into whatever you're doing, that just really 
it stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to to veer off from that. So that's the the one K and the Guap is actually an acronym. I do a lot of acronyms, but the Guap stands for God. You just average people. Okay. So describe, uh, take me through the time, man, when you first went to a record studio and record a song for the first time, man. Was it uh, easy for you catching on at first or was it kind of hard when you first went in there and recorded a song for the first time? It was easy to me because I had already been um, writing, like, before my mom died, it wasn't a real rap group, but me and my cousins used to go out out west, you know what I'm saying, on Cobb Avenue, my grandma house still down there, you know what I'm saying, and it's like a little, it's like a, I want to say a porch, but it got like a little roof over it, and we would just be out there rapping and stuff like that, so it started from then, Um, I was in the band before in seventh grade and gas, and so it kind of taught me the timing of music notes, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that, so I ain't gonna lie, I had to put more emphasis into my voice and things like that, but going from the paper or from my phone to actually getting the words out, that part right there was easy because I, I knew it was something that I wanted to do. Okay, so I say, so I heard you say you be writing. Would you say you more of a writer or a freestyle? See, or a see that was that was back then. Um, shout out to my brother, FDB Ali. Um, 2018, I was practicing for um, a fashion show that I had been asked to perform at. And one of the models was a producer and he made beats or whatever. And he was, um, he's actually the one who produced my money falling from the ceiling track. And that was one of the first times I had been around a producer who could cook up beats so fast. So he was at my house cause we was in college or whatever. And I'm telling them like, I'm more comfortable at my house, you know what I'm saying? I can smoke in my house. We ain't got to worry about the noise being too loud or whatever. I'm like, you just come over here. We can set up shop. We can do whatever we want to do over here. We ain't got to worry about the rules of the dorm and stuff like that. And he was just making the beat so fast. And I was just like, but I need to rap on a beat like this. So it just came to the point where I just started to blurt stuff out. Like, I got something for this, you know what I'm saying? I, I might have just one line and I say it to him. He'd be like, shoot, we could pull it up. And from there, it's like, well, what you going to do? And it's like in that instance, I learned how to observe what's going on around me. I learned how to tap into feelings that I might have felt 10 months ago and just let the beat speak to me and, and, and talk on the beat. And it's like now I don't write at all. Like it's I'm not going to say it's a waste of time, but I record myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm at home in my home studio. I ain't got time to. I'd rather just think it in my head, say it out loud, hear it, and then just, you know what I'm saying, put it right there. Okay, I can feel that. So as far as uh, pursuing the music, like uh, when did you really have that confidence to know that you really could pursue the music? Uh, I have to say 2018, linking up with Ali, um, the success of Money Falling, it really, because it was something that we created from nothing. You know what I'm saying? I had been at JSU since 2013. So, of course, a lot of people knew me. People knew that I wanted to pursue music. But just the reaction, like, Ali used to go to school in Africa. So some of his friends in Africa picked the song up, and they over there singing the song. They dancing to it and stuff like that. And he just let me know, like, even if they not supporting me right here where I'm at, if it's people way across the world in Africa that can feel this, like, I can actually do something. So I have to say that that 2018 moment. Okay. So um you're independent right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm independent. I'm independent. Okay. Uh would you sign to a major if it made sense? Yeah, if it, for me, I'm the type of person because like I ain't gonna sit here and cap and just say I got a hundred thousand dollars right now ready to put behind a single or do this or do this. I understand the uh, advantages and disadvantages of signing to a label i'm i'm the type of person i want to own everything i want to have i want to be able to have a say so in everything but i'm still coachable you know what i'm saying a lot of times they have artists who talk about well the label want me to make a song like this um or the label want me to make a song i'm not scared to venture out from like the the look that you see with the with the dreads and the tattoos and the baseball caps to the back i'm not 
I'm not just stuck in that, you know what I'm saying, in that one sense. So it's like I understand that a major label could do life-changing things for me. So, yeah, if it made sense, I, I definitely was signed to a major label. And it's like the type of artist that I want to be, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of these people don't get there without major labels. Not saying it's not possible, you know what I'm saying? But I understand what a major label backing me can do. Okay. Um, how often you be going to the studio and record? Um, I ain't been to. Last time I went to a different studio was probably about two weeks ago. Um, it's a producer down here in the Birmingham area. I done did some work with him, and he was creating a project he wanted me to be a part of. So I went to go record with him. But as you see, my mic right here. Uh, anytime I get off work, anytime I wake up during the middle of the night, I got a studio in my house. Um. And it, it could be every day. It could be I might not record for a month, but it really just for me, the big studio. is more for a look, it's more for getting the best mixes and stuff like that. Like the reason I'm so comfortable with my music and my artistry is because like I sit in here and I try some something that I might be scared to do in a big studio because like they may not know where I'm going with this. You know what I'm saying? And if I do it here first. I can work on it, perfect it. By the time I do go to the big studio, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like I'll be knocking stuff out and people just be, it, they be appalled because they be like, how do you? And it, and it's something that our coaches told us, you're going you're gonna to perform the way that you practice. So I, I'm, I'm always in here practicing. Okay. So when you uh, drop music to the public for the first time, when people was able to hear your music for the first time, just kind of uh, take me through that time. How was the city embracing you when they was able to see, uh, hear your music for the first time? Uh, at this time, when I first dropped my first release to the public, and I'm going I'm to say real release, like on Apple Music and all that other stuff, um, it was an R&B. It was an R&B tape. It was actually the, fo the first series or the first installment of the Flow series for ladies only. And... Um, I just realized that not to throw shade at my friends or anything like that, but I just feel like women support better. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, women going to carry the vibe. You know what I'm saying? If it's a, if it's a, a million girls over here in this one section, it's going to be 6 million dudes that come to this one section. You, you get what I'm saying? It's like the, the women, like, Everything that dudes do, they do it for the women. You feel me? So I'm like, if I can get the women to buy into it, the men won't really have a choice. You know what I'm saying? At this time when I dropped, I was in Jacksonville at the college. It's an, uh, an abundance of females. It's an abundance of females who like music directly, you know what I'm saying, generated for them or whatever. So um with me graduating from Aniston, I had people in Aniston who was rocking with the movement. I had people who was like, this dude doing all that singing and stuff, auto tone, you know what I'm saying? They, they didn't understand, like, bro, I'm an artist, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not ashamed to, to love a woman publicly, privately, you know what I'm saying? In my music, like, like, I love women, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm not ashamed to put that out there. So it's like, I just, I didn't get the support from Aniston or Gaston that I wanted to, but the people that knew what I was doing in Jacksonville and even at my job, like I had white people at my job who was buying the albums, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm on here talking about some taking some down, you know what I'm saying? These are my managers and stuff and they they literally buying the album off iTunes and stuff like that. So that right there, that was a that was that was a great feeling. That that was that's another one of the reasons why I just keep going with it. Like I don't really because I feel like I feel like the music bigger than where I'm at. Right. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Or or if the music is not bigger than where I'm at, the dream or where I'm trying to get to is bigger than where I'm at right now. Yeah, I can feel that. Uh have you done any shows yet? Yeah, I done did a lot of shows. I was um, especially like 2018, man, we was everywhere in Anderson. Um, what used to be the old smoking moose, shindings, uh they ain't gonna admit it to you, man. But Slashingville turned brothers back up in the field. Shout out to DJ Heavy C. Shout out to all the, the Greeks and everybody that had events that let us come through there and 
put our music out there on the platform. But yeah, man, uh, Atlanta with Ugly Money Nietzsche, my first show after I dropped The Flow in 2018, like I got flew to California in 2018 to perform. You know what I'm saying? Like I've lived in New York, so I performed in New York. That's why my style is different. You know what I'm saying? Like I understand the certain dem demographics and it's like, I want to make music for each and every one of them. Like I want, I don't care where you from, what you do, what you like. I want it to be at least one one K Guap song that you can relate to. Right. So describe the music scene in your city, man. Um, and also uh, um, explain if artists collab and things like that, or do, uh, do they just mind their own business? Um, like I said, I'm a, call myself a nomad. Um, I'm born and raised in Gaston, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, I learned a lot in, in Aniston from eighth grade to my freshman year of college, you know what I'm saying? I was in, I was in Aniston and it's like middle school, high school, you know, them some of your most impressionable years, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, out of gas and I done did songs with Block Work Dro. Um, I want to get some in with T James. He really like, I feel like he the most consistent right now. He got the he got the image going on. He got his manager putting him in the places that he need to be, you know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. Like and and the music is 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 there. You know what I'm saying? He got a production. Uh Yellow Boy beats his cousin. He going crazy on that. Um right now, I feel like in Gaston, uh shout out Lil Crack Rock too. I can't can't forget Lil Crack Rock, you know what I'm saying? He from Gaston, even though he be up here in Birmingham. I can't um I can't feel no type of way about it, but unless you just grew up with him, I feel like now it's a, everybody want to live like a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to get paid for the future. Everybody want to do this. And it's rightfully so, you know what I'm saying? Like I can't knock nobody for going about your business the way that you go about your business. But it's like, I feel like, I feel like if certain people came together, you know what I'm saying? We could make something bigger than us. Uh, and I understand I got, me and Doug G got a whole bunch of stuff. That's probably one of my, Doug G and Chi was one of my favorite people to collab with from Aniston because when I reached out to them in 2018 and stuff like that, like it wasn't no, it wasn't no problem. They pulled up on me, they came to my spot. Like I said, we ain't charging for no studio time or nothing like that, you feel me? We just, we ran it, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff going on in the cities, you know what I'm saying? Certain sides don't mess with certain sides, and rightfully so, I understand it. But it's like, for me, I'm the person, if I could, I'd bridge all that, you know what I'm saying? We all look the same, no matter if you from Norwood or Cooper Homes, 6th Street, 4th Ave, or 11th Street and Gas and things like that, bro, we all grew up the same way. We all look alike. We all really trying to get to the, to the, to the same common goal, you know what I'm saying? I understand certain stuff doesn't happen to where certain crowds don't mix with each other. And it's like, that's all right, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's all right. Because everybody, everybody doing their thing. But I just feel like, I feel like the internet, social media, and a lot of these people that's in places of influence that don't realize that they influencing people. I feel like that's really keeping these cities from thriving the way that we need to be thriving. Yeah, I feel that, man. It's a lot of, uh, Speaking from uh, personal experience, a lot of uh, division in Aniston. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. But it's so much talent oh. there. You know what I'm saying? Like on each side, bro, it's so much talent. So yeah. much talent there. Yeah, it's too small for it to be that divided. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, do you have any um, artists you want to work with in the future? In the future, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, Sway, where you at, man? You know what I'm saying? It ain't too many people. It ain't too, ain't too many people that can speak on that pain. You know what I'm saying? And 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 go where he can go. And it's like I feel like I'm one of them ones. I feel like Sway, one of the one of the ones that I've been looking at for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm like, yeah, but we need to get some in. And our schedules just never, you know what I'm saying? It just never worked out for that. And then we from two different places. Like I got a cousin from out west that can link me in with him, but it's just like, you know, it gotta be, gotta be genuine. Like keep doing numbers and stuff like that. So rightfully, 
if he wanted me to do this or do this, you know what I'm saying? You would just have to respect that. But um, on the local level, or I ain't, he's not a local artist. I'm just saying local to where we at. Uh, Sway, um, I ain't heard nothing from VI in a minute. VI used to go crazy, you know what I'm saying? I do a song with VI. Uh, Tuli, Tuli going crazy. I do a song with Tuli. Uh, it ain't a lot of people that I ain't did a song with. You know what I'm saying? So I just said like this, bro. If you if you from the two five six area and you working, I'll do a song with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like I love to make music. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm trying to get to a certain level with this music. So if you like minded, I don't care when you started, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody can learn how to rap, you know what I'm saying? Might be better than you. So I'll never try to just step over nobody or nothing like that, man. I'm willing to work with everybody. That's just me, though. You feel me? I ain't got no no beefs and nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing divide me, and I hope that the friends that I have on different sides wouldn't feel no type of way about that, because at the end of the day, it's all about music. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what would you say is your most successful project so far? My most successful project? I would have to say um, the Lomo Project, League of My Own. That was a project that I recorded in eight hours. Um, I just told my producer, I was like, I need the studio today. I want to make a tape. And um, when I hit you up to try to get you to, you know what I'm saying, see what was going on with my artistry so that we could do this interview, that's one of the ones I showed you that I made the, um, I made the charts in Japan, number 40. You know what I'm saying? This one right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so the, the Lomo album hitting the charts in Japan with me not knowing nobody over there, I feel like that that was my most successful project right there because I couldn't expect that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, uh, I've been to Japan before, man, and it's it ain't normal for somebody to reach. You country. know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah without, sure. without that uh, machine behind them. For sure. So for all your fans out there, man, uh, just explain some things you like to do when you're not doing music. Uh, when I'm not doing music, I uh, when I was in a relationship, I was, you know, what I'm saying with my with my with my woman or whatnot. Um, I still like to play sports, video games, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But most of the time, I be in the house chilling, out the way, thinking of a of some kind of promo idea or something that I can do to try to advance myself you know what i'm saying i'm up here in birmingham now and it's a lot of it's a lot going on especially if you don't know certain people you know what i'm saying and like i said i'm from i'm from gas and graduated from aniston so i don't i don't know these people up here like that for real for real so i really just i'll be in my studio man out the way if i ain't making music i'm probably eating asleep at work okay so uh what are your short and long-term goals man what you want to accomplish my short short term goals, uh short term goals, I say I wanna get my record label, Schlesinville Records, um, established off the ground, you know what I'm saying, and get us some looks. That's really the the foundation, you know what I'm saying, of all the other goals. So that would be the short term goals, long term goals, man. I wanna be one of the best artists you ever ever experienced, ever heard of, you know what I'm saying? I understand the work that comes with that. I understand the things that I have to have to do to get there. I, 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 I listen to the musicians who I feel like are there, you know what I'm saying? I look at the impact that they have on culture and, and all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, I want to be known as one of the best. Okay. I can feel that. So for the rest of 2022 and the beginning of 2023, man, just list some things you got coming, projects, features, things like that. Um, I just did it for ladies only three. Um, that's nine tracks on that project. Like I said, I just did that to dedicate that to my to my female fan base who's always been there, whether whether the numbers was up or down, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to do that and dedicate that to them. Um 2023. I got another collab tape coming with my boy C. Henny. Shout out C. Henny. Um, after that, me, C. Henny, and Ali got our Slats and Via collaborative tape where we're going to introduce people to what show love all the time really is. You know what I'm saying? Like with 
And I'm going to say this one time, free wide sale, man, with the big bros, Thug and Gunner and them gone like that, it's a certain sound that's low-key been missing out. You know what I'm saying? The, the melodies, the pockets, and things like that. And it's just the way that he ran his record label as a family, like, that's how we treat Slassonville. That's how we treat one another, us as, as three brothers. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just working on... I'm going to do a lot of singles, uh, videos, promo to, for all the music that I've dropped. I got to catch these people up to speed. I've been ahead of my time for a long time, so it's time to make it all make sense, tie it in for the fans. Now, that's, those are my plans for the end of 22 and 23. Okay. So uh, how do you want people to perceive you? I want them um, – I want to be perceived with open eyes. I don't want you to um, – I don't want you to close your eyes and listen to what you may have heard from somewhere else. I want you to examine it. I want you to break it down. And when I say you, I mean whoever's listening, whoever's watching, whoever's reading, you know what I'm saying? Whatever I'm involved in, if you in taking that, I want you to understand that I'm I'm just like you and I'm probably speaking from a place that you've been in before. Okay. So uh, closing remarks, man, anything else that you want to say to the people that you got going on right now and uh, let the people know how to find you on social media, things like that? Uh, you can find me on social media, Instagram and Twitter. That's underscore 1KGUAP underscore. Once again, that's underscore 1KGUAP underscore. I'm on TikTok at slat underscore guap. Um, I'll be on there making a fool of myself, man, just – I'm having fun, for real, for real. Uh, only thing I want to say is keep God first. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thing. Um, and just have fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, understand tomorrow isn't promised. You feel me? So do all that you can today to be better today than you was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. Show love all the time. Like, don't don't be out here hating on nobody. You know what I'm saying? Wait your turn, cause just because they shining now don't don't mean that your your day ain't gonna be on the way. Like, just stay down for it. That's that's what I want to tell the people. Okay. So yeah, man, I uh, appreciate you uh, coming on the podcast, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. I like your questions too, man. They was they was different. They was different. Oh yeah, yeah. I try to keep it uh, authentic, like a regular uh, conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, for sure. Drop style. But, uh, you know, anytime you want to come on, man, you just uh, hit me up anytime. You know, uh, I don't just do interviews, talk about real stuff, such as relationships, yeah. child support, police brutality. Yeah, if you, if, if you need any, if you need anybody to um, offer, like, a, a different point of view, you know what I'm saying, like, with the, with the Kanye stuff going on and not just this specific situation, you know what I'm saying, but. As an artist, like, if you was in that position and you lost your endorsements, you know what I'm saying? Like, if that was a question that you wanted to pose, you know what I'm saying? Like, i love to be a part of discussion questions, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's it's more to me than just what meets the eye, than just the image, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can, I can go way deeper than that, you know what I'm saying? So anytime you need somebody, let me know. Hit me up. I done did um, theme songs, all kind of stuff, man, like. Just let me know, whatever it is. And it'll always be free of charge, bro. You feel me? Like, I'm just trying to spread. I'm trying to grow. Yeah, I've been uh, thinking of doing it because I got a podcast theme song right now. I don't know if you heard it, uh, but uh, it's on my YouTube channel. But uh guy I was in the military with that I'm real cool with, he uh, did it with me. I did it for yeah. me. But uh, I was thinking about doing another one, and I was like, but I was like, man, I was thinking this time I got to get a – uh, because he shot the video. Like, it was actually a video song he did for himself. But the song fit my podcast so good. I was like, bro, you got to let me get that song. So, yeah. So, he let me have Like I said, anything that you would want included in it, write it out for me. Even if you don't use the song, send it to me. I, I attempt the song. If you want this change, this change, that change, let me know. I'll get it back to you, man. Like it's, it's it's all about working. It's all about cross promotion and trying to get us to a, a a whole nother platform. That's why I said when we get out, I'm gonna tell my brother Ali about you. He just dropped some stuff. He he the young prodigy. He the one producer, artist, engineer. You know what I'm saying? He got some. He he's he's a signed producer 
He got affiliations with 808 Mafia. You know what I'm saying? He on Facebook as well. I can send you send you his Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Boom, we can go keep it, keep it running. I understand that you got people that's tapping in with you all the time. You know what I'm saying? But ain't never too much motion. Ain't never too much content. You know what I'm saying? And there's people that's actually some people going to watch it. You know what I'm saying? They they tune in. They want to know. Uh, he just had a kid. You feel me? And I feel like I want him to do more interviews. You know what I'm saying? Like, from a big brother's perspective, because I understand that the story is sell before the music. You know what I'm saying? And if you could, if you could sell, if you could sell the story, the music would go right along with it. So, yeah, man, yeah, I feel that, bro. I was uh, yeah. thinking about, I was like, because I was telling one of my homies the other day, I was like, bro, I need to do a podcast theme song with like three or four of the hardest up and coming artists and then shoot a music video, bro. I think that's it. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. But yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. And you know, uh, anytime you want to come on, man, just, uh, just let me know, man. And uh, for all my supporters out there, um, I appreciate you supporting the podcast. We just hit uh, 2,500 subscribers the day before yesterday. Shout out. You feel me? Shout out. Keep going up. On uh, YouTube. So I appreciate everybody supporting it. Uh, the E Blue interview just dropped on uh, YouTube. He's verified on Instagram. He's been going crazy with his. Uh, his uh, latest single, No Biggie. He from Houston. He real, he real dope. And um, be on the lookout uh, next Monday. I got the Res to Shine interview dropping next Monday at twelve. So that's biggest interview of my career. So I expect that interview to do well. And I got two more interviews dropping. Uh, the the uh, two weeks after that. Uh, future artists, free band tests, and uh, DMX artists, uh, one shot deals. So, so I was, um, appreciate everybody. Everybody have been tapping in with me, and uh, I need everybody to go support One uh, K Guap on uh, all screaming platform. I love them, real, man. real dope artists, um, and just something different, man. You know. Everybody listen to the uh, mainstream Mars all the time, you know, because you ain't got no choice but to see that. Cause yeah, you ain't got no choice but to hear it, feel it, see it. <laughs> There's too much money involved, but the people that we can physically see every day that, you know, we ain't got to pay to go see, you know what I'm saying? You know, we got to normalize supporting those people too. You know, we got to be a balance. So, uh Everybody, uh, stay tuned to the Air J the Great podcast and uh, more dope content on the way, man. And uh, you have a good night, bro. All right, you too.